Good morning, guys. It is 6, 16, September 21st, 2017. That is Eastern Time. Now, here we go. We got Maria. Uh, something I want you to notice right off the bat is how quickly this eye wall has reformed after the eye wall replacement cycle that happened right before we had landfall. Uh, with Puerto Rico. Uh, we were at Cat 5, 175 mile per hour winds, and then we had that eye wall replacement cycle where the outer eye wall takes over the inner eye wall. The wind field expands, but the winds drop. So this was actually good news for Puerto Rico, if you want to call it good news. Guys, there is record-breaking flooding happening in Puerto Rico right now. They have uh, a lot, a, a lot, a lot of damage uh, damaged structures, trees down, no power. Guys, these poor people may not have power for four to six months. That was the Puerto Rican mayor saying that um, on the Weather Channel during a phone call. I'm not even sure how they got her on the phone, to be honest with you, but guys, could you imagine not having power for four months? That's an estimate, too. That's what the uh, the mayor or the president, I'm not exactly sure what the title is there, but uh, I'm assuming mayor, the mayor of Puerto Rico, four to six months guys not only that but they have had one river probably more this river in 1994 uh, capped at like 29 feet and that was massive flooding for this area guys this river has capped at I think over 80 feet now we're talking entire three-story buildings underwater and you can swim like you would swim deep down just to touch the roofs of these buildings that's how drastic this flooding is it's because of the mountains in this area. Uh, they come to very sharp valleys, and all of their villages and towns are at the bottoms of these valleys, guys. 79 to 82 feet underwater. Could you just, just think about that for a second? That is unbelievable, the amount of rain this storm is holding. And not only that, guys, but if you remember when I was talking about that eye wall replacement cycle, um, the eye wall collapsed as it was hitting Puerto Rico. But if you look now, guys, this eye wall is reforming. It's huge. It's about 65 miles uh, across now at this point, uh, which means that wind field is also huge. Uh, we did dip down into a Category 2 storm yesterday, 110 mile an hour winds. We are back up to a Category 3, 115 mile per hour sustained winds, 130 mile per hour gusts. We are at 959 is the pressure. So the pressure is held for about uh, 10, 12 hours now. I do expect it to drop. I do expect this hurricane to get stronger as it's making its way uh, towards Turks and Caicos. I think it's going to pass uh, a little bit to the east of there. That's what most of the tracks are showing. But also, guys, Dominican Republic, uh, this eye is so big now that they're basically getting these strong winds on the, south, uh, the northeast side of the island. Uh, for now, so we need to keep an eye on that, and then we have uh, Haiti in the in the mix, and then we have Turks and Caicos. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about what's steering this storm and what we need to look for as far as the future goes. Now, first, I want to run you through some of these models, guys. Some of these models bring this thing scary close to the coast. So, I'm just going to move forward here. Actually, let me back up to where Jose is. Now, Jose is still playing a significant role, guys. We have very high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic. You can see this H here. Big, big bubble in the ocean. We also have high pressure in front of this wall here. If you can follow my mouse, this is part of our jet stream. We have a low here. That's why it's snowing in the mountains, guys. Already getting snow in the mountains. And that's why areas of the northeast and the entire east coast, basically, are having this crazy heat wave. It almost feels like summer. If you can see my mouse, we're going to talk about this on some other charts. This is our jet stream here. It's a deep U right now, so this is causing high pressure in this area. And what this is doing is there's a battle going on, uh, if you want to think of it that way in simple terms. High pressure in the ocean, and we got high pressure down here. And then we have Jose cutting a path through the middle of it. That's why we want Jose to stay longer. Now listen to what I'm saying. We want Jose to be here as long as possible. Because what Jose is doing right now is it's cutting this path right here in this pressure. In fact, I'll show you real quick on this chart. So we have Jose here. We have Maria coming up in this direction. This whole area, very high pressure. Okay, so it's almost impenetrable. So right now, with just this part of the high pressure going on, this would be our case here. This is what we don't want. So I'm gonna take that path away. We have high pressure here. All right, so right now, 
and then high pressure here. This is why the east coast is getting a heat wave. We have the U coming down like that. This is all hot weather. This is very cold weather. And this U is moving this way, and it's going to move out into the ocean. Okay? You follow so far? I hope I explained this correctly. So again, we have our U. And basically what we want is we want this part of the wall of our jet stream to move out into the ocean and basically meet Maria here and then push it against this high pressure and keep it off our coast. Now, if that, uh, if the U doesn't come quick enough, is what I'm saying, like if we get this and then Maria is about here at that time, that's why we're going to have uh, landfalls on the east coast. So we are relying on this deep U in the jet stream, again, cold weather, hot weather, to push out this way and push Maria off our coast. But again, we're dealing with this high bubble pressure. And also, the reason that we can even have a chance with this is Jose. Jose is going to keep a path right there. As The longer it stays here, the better we are because it's going to allow Maria to have a path to keep off the east coast. All right? So I'm going to show you a couple of the jet stream charts that we have right now. And I just want you to watch. See, this is our main jet stream form up top, the rainbow colors. And down here is Maria, as you can see. I'm moving forward. Maria's got some little pressures to deal with. It's keeping it against the coast, like we said before. This is uh, our high pressure area. We move forward. And again, we don't even see Jose here. Jose is causing a cut in this pressure. This is what we want. And basically what we're looking for is this part of the jet stream, which according to this chart is not going to make it quick enough and that's what's been happening with these charts, guys. The jet stream is just not moving fast enough to uh, keep up with the prediction models. So as I move forward, you see that. And this little area here is what we're relying on. We have a jet stream. This is our jet stream. This was our hot weather. And now cold weather behind it. We want this wall to get here before Maria gets to the coast. And then we want it to push it out. And that's why Jose is playing such a big role. Because if Jose wasn't there, we would have a big bubble... I'll show you really quick. If Jose wasn't in this area here, it would be all high pressure like this. High pressure. High pressure. And then Maria would have nowhere to go but into this area here. So Jose is cutting that path right there, and it's allowing an escape for Maria to get caught up in this and then drug out. Okay? I hope, you, I hope that was explained good. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. Here is another version of the jet stream I want to show you. It gives you a better idea of that U that we're talking about. Hot weather, cold weather. So here we go. I'm going to move forward. Okay, I guess that was the... Uh... See, that's why I kind of stopped using this model. It doesn't go too far into the future. But you can see, this is that wall we're looking for. We want this to move to the east and meet Maria here before we get to the east coast. And that's what this is showing. It's showing it's going to do its job. But again, guys, there's a little break. There's a disintegration of the jet stream going on. That's exactly what happened with Irma. And Irma was trapped down here because of this break in the jet stream that I'm starting to see already. And it pushed it west into the gulf. I don't think that's going to happen if it does break and cause a wall. If anything, it's going to keep it closer to Florida. And then we have some real issues to deal with. So this is why this storm is so important to watch. Now I'm going to move forward in this model. Here's Jose. And this is what we're talking about with the battle for the pressures. This is high pressure. Once Jose leaves, that's why we have the issues going on. And that's why a lot of these models are showing uh, Maria come up and then hook left. It's uh, basically that high pressure is connecting up here because Jose leaves, and that allows Maria to get into the coast. So this is our ECMWF model, the European model. Shows it getting closer to the east coast, making a little left turn, and then getting caught by the jet stream. So almost just making it on time. I'm going to switch to the GFS now. Sorry about that. It's got to load, unfortunately. It updates pretty often now, so that's why. Now, if you take a look, this is the only model that's giving us some hope, at least keeping this out into the ocean. So the GFS is hoping that the jet stream moves out quick. But still, by the time we get to this area, that's too close for comfort. You can see the expanding wind field due to the cooler water. But guys, we're still at a pressure at 945. That could be a possible Category 3 storm while it's still in these cold waters. And that's what the issue is going to be. We need to watch how strong this storm gets now. 
back in up here. We're going to see if we can get Jose back in the picture. There we go. Now, this model actually still plays that little bit of that Fujiwara effect. Uh, but Jose's just disintegrating as that happens. And it just manages to kick Maria out to the right a little bit. And there we go. That's where it makes its left turn. And now we're talking North Carolina and Virginia having to deal with this storm, which is also, according to the pressure, a possible Category 3. That's why, guys, this is why this is so important. We cannot rule this storm out. I know a lot of the spaghetti models and stuff show coming out to the right, but they're anticipating the jet stream, which is also what they did for Irma. But that jet stream broke about 48 hours before Irma was supposed to come up the East Coast, and it pinned it down to the West, and that's why it hit Cuba, and that's why it went into the Gulf side instead, and it hit the West side of Florida. So, guys, the jet stream can change, and that's why all these models can change. So everyone that's relying on this that, oh, it's just going to get kicked out to the ocean. We don't know that yet. These models are starting to get closer and closer to the East Coast. And also, you can tell the tone of these people on TV. They're just, they think this thing's getting real close to the East Coast. They're even talking about a skim uh, between Virginia and North Carolina. Now, I'm going to show you the GFS on Ventu Sky really quick. It gives us some hope. But again, the GFS hasn't been too right about this. We've usually, uh, people have been leaning more towards the European model for these storms. Uh, which I agree because the the past shows the history of it. It's just it's on point But again GFS I do have the wind turned up for steering you can see it a little better I'll just turn it down just so you guys understand There we go Here's the 27th and by this time the 27th according to the GFS the jet stream has made its uh, pass here We will be dealing with cooler air in the Northeast maybe cold air guys <laughs> unfortunately Here's the 28th, and by the 28th, it's basically getting kicked out. So the GFS has this thing still meeting our jet stream and then getting pulled out, and that's what we want. But again, the GFS has not really been doing that good with predicting these. The, the European model has been the right one. Here's another version of Navgem, and we're going to move forward here. First, got to stop it. And here's Jose here. Here's Maria. You watch the East Coast here, and this is what Navgem has to say. Monday, this is Monday at noon. Here's Tuesday at 2 p.m. And that, according to Navgem, is the closest approach of the last frame we have. Wednesday at 11 p.m., we are just a couple hundred miles off the coast of North Carolina and Virginia. So, guys, again, these models are getting closer and closer to the coast, and not only that, but the, they're showing pressures of a really strong storm. I understand these waters are cool, but it's all about the momentum and how strong this storm gets before it gets to the east coast. Once it does get parallel with about Georgia and South Carolina, basically it does rely on momentum because the warmest of the water's over, so it's, it's going to depend on how quickly it's moving. Uh, right now it's moving northwest at 9 miles an hour, which is pretty slow, and the reason that's concerning to me is because look at the development of this eye wall again guys this eye wall went from basically nothing to once again not only perfect but it doubled in size we had a 30 mile eye wall before the eye wall replacement cycle before we hit Puerto Rico and now we have a 60 plus mile eye wall so that means the wind field probably extends out 175 miles so we're talking the highest winds Maybe a little less than that, about 100 miles outside the eye wall. You're going to get your strongest winds of about 115 right now. So that's important to think about because it's not just the uh, inner part of this eye wall that's going to cause damage. It's 100 miles extended out, and then 175 miles beyond that are tropical storm force. So this is why we need to really pay attention to the Dominican Republic, the north coast, maybe Haiti. I don't think Haiti will be... Uh, Besides the uh, weather bands, I don't think it'll be much at risk. But then we got to think about Turks and Caicos, guys, because this thing is heading right at them. Um, it is projected to stay to the east side of them and then make its northern approach. And then it's all about the U.S. mainland and possibly Bermuda. So, guys, this is a very significant storm, especially with this eye wall reforming. Look at that. See, no eye wall, basically, and then, boom, it turns into a perfect circle almost. And that's when you start seeing those wind speeds raise. Um, the pressure will drop again. 
Um, I'm not sure. Actually, I am sure. It's at 959 right now. I think we already said that. But that pressure is going to drop because, there, once again, there's nothing in the way of this storm to stop it besides warm water. There's no shear winds whatsoever. So basically, these models now are all relying on the jet stream, like a battle between... Let me show you. On this one... Uh, once again, the battle is going to be between this high pressure here. This is high pressure right now. Once this U pushes to the east, they're relying on this part of the wall to keep Maria off the coast. But the problem is, in this last frame, it's already breaking. So this might just be a piece that comes down maybe this far. And by that time, Maria might only be in this area. So they're, they're projecting the speed also. The speed may change. And that's why you need to check these models all the time. Really important. Again, moving the jet stream. Let me go back to zero hour. Here we go. This is current. So now we're 30 hours into the future, 54 hours into the future, 72 hours, 84 hours. And look at this, guys. According to this chart, 90 hours from now, this U is well off the coast, but they're still showing Maria out into the ocean. So the, the jet stream part of this model is basically predicting that they this part will be closer than it really is and then we have the high pressure here keeping it pinned against the coast I know I may be being repetitive here but this is the most important part with this storm and this is what we need to watch out for and this is why we need Jose to stay here Jose is cutting that path that we need for Mar uh, Maria to be brought up here without touching the coast and then out but again if Maria doesn't do that Okay, so basically we have the high here, and we have high here, and that's due to Jose. If Jose wasn't here, these two would be connected. It would be a high like this, and it would rotate uh, counter or clockwise rather, and push Maria into the coast. So that's why Jose is such a big deal right now, and that's why we are glad Jose is there. All right, guys, I hope I didn't mumble too much on you. I hope I explained this pretty well. We have a very rapidly developing eye wall. Again, uh, Maria is going to get stronger. It's just a matter of how strong. And then we need to see what's going on with the East Coast, guys. These models, every day, almost every hour, are getting closer and closer to the East Coast. And that just shows that they, they, they have a good idea of where this thing is going to go. They don't want to panic people. I don't want to panic anyone. But, guys, this is the info we have, and this is what we need to rely on. So that's it for now, guys. I will update you later on this afternoon I'm sorry I didn't have an update last night it was just a busy night and guys anyone in Puerto Rico I pray for these people guys they are dealing with record breaking flooding a river crest at 80 feet think about that the amount of water 80 feet all right guys I will talk to you all this afternoon thank you very much